السلام عليكم uh, today I'm going to continue uh, lectures about uh, autoimmune liver disease uh, and today we're going to talk about primary berry cholangitis and Dr. Mathas Fathi Saad consultant in gastroenterology and hepatology so today we're going to talk, to talk about uh, as I mentioned BBC so uh, it's formally known uh, as primary berry cirrhosis and it's a chronic disease of the liver uh, uh, mostly in autoimmune nature, at least two progressive cholestasis and often any stage of a disease. Uh, the name changed recently uh, and it reflects the fact that cirrhosis occurs only in the late stage and therefore it does not correctly identify patients with early stage disease. And BBC is most frequently a disease of women and occurs between the fourth and sixth decade of life. Most experts believe that there is always uh, an element of overlap. There is no uh, single autoimmune liver disease. So as you know, we have three major uh, uh, issues, which are autoimmune hepatitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis and primary biliary cirrhosis. And as you can see here, uh, there is always an, uh, an overlap, even if it's uh, uh, mild or clinically insignificant, but there's always an overlap with uh, ANA positive in, uh, in BBC and um, IH. And the anchor also can be positive in, uh, in both BSC and AIH. And as you know, at an AIH, we look uh, usually for anti smooth muscle and anti liver kidney mechanism antibody, and also anti cerebral liver engine antibody and F actin. And by uh, histopathology, we look for interface hepatitis, plasma cell infiltration, and elevated uh, IgG. And usually, treatment will be targeted and non specific immune suppression, usually with a steroid or through sparing agent as alacybrine. In BBC, also we look for an, an, an AMA or anti mitochondrial antibody. And also there is a, a, a good proportion having a specific AMA for a BBC, which is anti-centromere or anti-GB210 or anti-SB100. And by histopathology, we look for small bile duct destruction. And also we can find in the serum elevated IgM and all those patients might have an sick uh, complex. And the treatment usually by uh, orthotoxicolic acid or UDCA, and a second line, metocolic acid or OCA, and uh, uh, other symptom control. And we come to this in details uh, later. And in, in PSC, usually it's psychological evidence of bile duct injury or repeating, as uh, uh, you all know. And also there's periductal fibrosis, cholestasis, and uh, concurrent colitis in almost 70-75% of patients with uh, PSC having underlying uh, 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 IBD, uh, either Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, and usually more with ulcerative colitis. So here we have to uh, be a caution about cancer surveillance. Sorry. We have to be cautious about cancer surveillance and, uh, of, of course, of uh, cholangic carcinoma and management of the structure uh, and infections and colitis. So for uh, etiology of BBC, uh, uh, it's a disease of unknown etiology, but there's various uh, factors that have been implicated as cause of illness such as the following. The genetic factor, the first degree relative have up to a thousand fold increased chance of developing PPC. The presence of an inherited abnormal abnormality of immune regulation has been proposed as a cause of this. And also infection with organism of the family uh, anterior bacteria C also because of cross reactivity between antigens of the bacterial wound and the mitochondria have been postulated. Patients with primary bilirubin cholangitis present with an increased incidence of gram-negative uh, UTI. So for epidemiology, the data are scarce and uh, it's not well studied. And uh, uh, the most relevant data comes from uh, uh, the US. So it says that although the epidemiology of BBC has not been studied systematically, published prevalence is 65.4 uh, uh, case for women and 12.1 uh, uh, case uh, for men uh, uh, was 40.2 cases overall bear 100,000 population, while the incidence of the disease has been estimated of 4.5 cases uh, for women and 0.7 cases for men with uh, 2.7 cases uh, overall bear 100,000 population.
But BBC is more common in Northern Europeans and less common in population of Africa descent. Uh, women account for uh, almost 90% of patients with BBC, so it's almost nine to one, female to male. Uh, males who are affected have a, a disease course similar to that of females. However, men appear to be more likely to, to develop an HCC, unfortunately. BBC mostly affect middle-aged women with mean age of 39. Uh, the onset usually occur in person at age of 30 to 65. However, patients as young as 22 years and as old as 93 years at time of diagnosis have been reported. So how those patients present? Usually the most common uh, uh, symptom is fatigue, which accounts for 65% of patients, they present with fatigue. So the first reported symptom can uh, cause disability in some patients and has been associated with depression and uh, uh, obsessive compulsive behavior or OCD. The etiology is unknown. However, a sleep abnormality, uh, particularly excessive daytime uh, uh, somnolence, have been um, identified in significant proportion of patients and have been associated with degree of fatigue. And there's no correlation exists between this symptom and the stage of liver disease. The height uh, of the uh, enzyme the liver disease, of, of liver enzymes, or the Mayo uh, uh, model score, which is a specific score for cholestatic liver uh, disease, uh, or duration of therapy. I mean, if it's, it's there's no correlation between severity of the disease and severity of fatigability. Patient might have a mild disease with severe fatigue, and might have severe disease and mild fatigue. So the second uh, most common is bilirubitis. It accounts for 35% of patients and 10% of patients experience severe bilirubitis, which can affect or interfere with their normal life. So the cause of this symptom is still unknown, but bilirubitis appears uh, unrelated to the deposition of bile uh, acid in the skin. An increased production of endogenous opioid peptides and upregulation of endogenous uh, opioid receptor appears to be the major mechanism. The height of the bilirubin level is uh, proportionately related to the production of these peptides, and also there is right upper quadrant discomfort, and this appears only in 8 to 17 percent of patients. So this is the disease course, and it is called the kaplan muir blot of entire UC cohorts by clinical status. So as you can see in uh, in the yellow uh, uh, line, they present patients with no blood hypertension and no liver failure. And the red line present patients with water hypertension, and the red and the black line represent patients with water hypertension and liver failure. And of course, as you all expect, that patients with no water no hypertension or uh, and normal liver, they might have a uh, uh, normal life and they have the highest expectancy of uh, of living. And those with water hypertension they have this, and those with water hypertension and liver failure have very uh, 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 limited chance to survive uh, for a long time. So uh, what the financial diagnosis of BBC, you know, it's called aesthetic liver disease. So it can be uh, mixed with an AIH, with biliary obstruction, with drug-induced hepatitis or DELI, or even with graft versus host disease, with BSC, or bionic splenic cholangitis, with IgG4-related hepatobiliary disease, and also sometimes uh, might be uh, uh, mistaken as sarcoidosis. So how can we work up those patients? Uh, uh, the first and most common test uh, we all do in our clinics is liver function or transaminases. So an elevation of uh, ALT and AST <clears throat> may be identified in most patients with a BBC, but the significant elevation of ALKFOS and gamma-GT and immunoglobulins, mainly IgM, are usually the most prominent findings. So again, here we stress mainly on ALKFOS, gamma-GT, and again, mostly the ALKFOS, which is the most important uh, factor, and we'll come to this also later. And also, we can find elevated uh, gamma-GT and uh, uh, serum IgM. So lipid level and cholesterol also may be increased with an increased high-density lipoprotein fraction, and this might explain why these patients do not have an increased risk of astrosclerosis. You might find the striking number in total cholesterol but if you see the breakup, uh, the breakdown, you will see that it's mostly HDL. And also uh, ESR uh, might be a little bit high on those patients. 
So as the disease progresses to cirrhosis, and of course, you know, bilirubin will be high, um, INR will be prolonged, and the albumin will be low, and the increased bilirubin level uh, is an uh, uh, ominous sign of disease progression, and liver transplant must be considered. So here, uh, bilirubin, if it's getting high in those patients, so mostly they are getting cirrhotic and uh, uh, medical treatment might not be of uh, uh, benefit, and they should be listed for liver transplant. And here I need to stress uh, uh, again and again that severe uh, PVC does not mean high bilirubin. It depends mainly on ALKFOS. High bilirubin means cirrhosis if it's associated with BBC. So I mean at the presentation of patients, patients are having high ALKFOS and high bilirubin and AMA is positive, this patient is teaching cirrhotic and will need liver transplant soon. Also, some cytopenia or decreased beta count is indicative of water hypertension. Then, additionally, uh, uh, but not as commonly, abnormalities include elevated stroboblasmin and bile acids. The hallmark of the disease is presence of AMAs, not AMA, and it's very important because we will we, we'll, we'll talk about it in details in the serum. So, anti mitochondrial antibodies are very important. So, AMAs can be found in 90 to 95% of patients with BBC, and they have a specificity of uh, 98%. These antibodies target different uh, uh, components, mainly enzymes in the mitochondria. So if we find a patient with positive uh, AMA and elevated ALKFOS, no need for biopsy. This is an, uh, uh, enough to diagnose a BBC. Again, there's no need for biopsy to diagnose a BBC and the presence of AMA. So as I mentioned, it's AMA, so we have an anti-M2, M4, M8, and M9, so associated with severity of primary bilirubin cholangitis. So if you are having a good lab, which have the ability to do a, a quantification and the qualification of the uh, uh, AMAs, you might have patients profile A, or those who are having uh, only an uh, anti-M9, or profile B, you are having anti-M9 uh, and or anti-M2 positive by ELISA. They have better disease course as uh, the patient with profile C uh, who have an anti-M2, anti-M4 and or anti-M8 positive by ELISA and profile B, which is those who are having an anti-M2, anti-M4 and or anti-M8 positive by ELISA uh, and commonly fixation test. Also, AMAs also are important and can be identified in up to 50% of patients with BBC. Uh, and it's as I, as I mentioned before, it's called and BBC specific AMAs. Some patients have clinical, biochemical, and histological features of BBC, but their sera are negative of AMA. So diagnosis of autoimmune cholangitis have been used to these patients, but whether these patients represent what's called an AMA negative BBC or no, it's still a matter of debate. So usually if they are fulfilling the whole criteria, but with negative AMA, we call them an autoimmune cholangitis rather than an AMA negative primary bilirubin cholangitis. So this is very uh, interesting uh, uh, table. It tells us the importance of every uh, single test we do and its role in suspicious diagnosis and prognosis of BBC. So as you see here, an alkaline phosphatase or ALP, is the most important because it's really suspicious and it helps in diagnosis, and also it's uh, the mostly the most commonly used parameter for prognosis. So as you see, transcendence or it cannot uh, uh, ALTST are not enough to diagnose, but only it also it uh, uh, only can be used for suspicion and for prognosis. Uh, gamma GT and also IgM also for suspicious. AMA uh, if it's more than one forty, it's diagnostic or a specific uh, uh, ANA, as I mentioned, like anti-centromere and uh, nuclear dot ANA, also uh, uh, diagnostic. The second line, like uh, anti-GB220 and anti-SB100, uh, anti-centromere, uh, also can be used in diagnosis and prognosis. And uh, uh, bilirubin, platelets, INR, and alumin, and or indicative of abort hypertension and cirrhosis, so they're also good in prognosis. So as you can see here, the most important two here are alkaline phosphatase and the AMA. So for uh, uh, other worker, we can do an ultrasound abdomen, of course, or CT. 
uh, for or MRI are important to exclude building obstruction uh, or uh, PSC. And also non-specific findings include increased epigenicity of the liver, brain command, and findings compatible with portal hypertension, like splenomegaly and dilated portal vein. And also you might find the portal lymphadenopathy at uh, up to 15% of patients. And once patients are cirrhotic, uh, follow-up imaging every six months with donor ultrasound is suggested to detect uh, hepatic malignancy, so they, sh they should be on surveillance for HCC. So uh, this is a, a summary for how to establish diagnosis. If you get a patient to a clinic with elevated uh, serum alpha and gamma GT uh, with or without hyperbilirubinemia with negative hepatitis B and C, so we go for history and physical examination and donor ultrasound. If it's suspicious uh, of daily or focal lesion or there's dilatation, so here it's not an BBC, there's another diagnosis. So a a if AMA or ANA uh, are positive, so these patients is uh, can be diagnosed as a BBC without any further uh, uh, workup needed. So if it's negative, we go for extended imaging like MRCP, uh, plus or minus endoscopic ultrasound. So if we see stones or sclerotic changes, so uh, it's also diagnosed. If not, we go for uh, liver biopsy. If we can see brain damage or biliary lesions, also we can diagnose that the, uh, the patient with autoimmune cholangitis. If not, we can go for uh, a gene test. If it's negative, so only observation can be done and the re-evaluation uh, after a while. So there is a cascade of investigations that we can uh, we can do. So for staging, there are various staging systems have been developed, but the most prominent uh, are the, uh, those proposed by Ludwig et al. And chose stage one, which is called the portal stage of Ludwig. It uh, means portal inflammation, bile duct abnormalities, uh, or both are present. And stage two is periportal fibrosis is present with or without periportal inflammation, or prominent uh, enlargement of portal tract with uh, seeming, seemingly intact and uh, newly formed limiting blades. The stage three, uh, septal stage, uh, septal fibrosis was an active inflammatory uh, and passive uh, postcellular septum, uh, or both are present. The stage four, uh, or the end stage, the cirrhotic stage, nodules with various degree of inflammation uh, uh, are present. So how can we treat patients with BBC? This is the, uh, the dilemma and uh, the main issue of uh, uh, our lecture. So the goal of treatment here is to slow the progression rate of disease and to uh, uh, elevate the symptoms like bedritis, osteoporosis, or Sika syndromes, which can be uh, sometimes devastating to our patients. Uh, treatment of BBC has been dominated by a bile acid-based approach to therapy. Several other agents have been studied, including immunosuppressant, but consistent evidence uh, of benefit still uh, uh, lacking. BBC uh, progressive, progressively and uh, progressive, uh, uh, progress slowly, and therefore, uh, individuals, uh, individual trial like the power of uh, to address uh, endpoints such as this or liver transplantation. So the most commonly or the cardinal stone uh, medication used is UDCA or orthodoxycholic acid. There's a major medication used to slow the progression of the disease. The patient with early disease uh, have clinical, biochemical, and histological improvement. And reports suggest that UDCA delay the need of transplant and delay uh, death. The efficacy of this medication in late stage is still questionable. Patients who achieve biochemical response to UDCA after one year of treatment reportedly uh, had a similar survival rate to the matched control population. And this is a very important or the most important statement in this uh, lecture. Uh, always try to find your patients early before they get cirrhosis, because at this stage, if they respond well to treatment, they might have normal uh, uh, life expectancy. And uh, ironically, most patients, as I mentioned, they uh, present to us with arthritis. So you find them uh, mainly in dermatology clinics, our colleagues in dermatology, they think it's urticaria, they give them treatment, antihistaminics, um, uh, uh, some local emollients, and they don't do uh, alcohol, even if they do liver functions, they ask for ALT and EST, which might be normal in early stages. So patients can be lost in uh, a dermatology clinic, and later on, they can be sent when it's too late. So it's very important to catch the patients early. 
to give them this chance to survive. So as I mentioned, it, uh, and also it's it's very important to identify population of non-responders who will require alternative or additional therapy. therapy. The use of uh, UDCA after transplant with evidence of recurrence of a disease has been associated with the chemical response, although it's role in delaying histological progression needs further investigations. So we all know that UDCA is a very uh, 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 nice, very benign drug, and we think the response rate is very high, but uh, you can be surprised if you can see according to different uh, uh, scales or different classification or different scores for response like Barcelona or Paris 1 and 2, Rotterdam and Toronto, you can find in, in Paris 2, which is the most commonly used uh, 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 scoring response, uh, uh, scores to assess response to treatment, you find up to 52% of patients they do not respond to UDCA or uh, cannot tolerate. So it's almost half of, of our patients on UDCA who don't show a good response uh, to uh, to the medication. Hence uh, came uh, the need for a second line therapy or a newer uh, medication. So this is how to assess response to UDCA therapy in, in BBC. We have uh, so many scoring systems with our qualitative uh, binary definitions like Rochester, Barcelona, Paris 1, Rotterdam, Toronto, Paris 2, and uh, Eheim. And the most common use, as I mentioned, is Paris 2, which uh, defined as a 12, after 12 months of treatment, if the ALKFOS is more than 1.5 above the normal and AST is more than 1.5 above the normal or the more than one milligram. So uh, this defined as treatment failure. So a phosphatase should be less than uh, uh, 1.5 to normal to be uh, 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 to label patient as uh, uh, responsive uh, to treatment, but the easel they suggest that UDCA treatment patient with an ALKFOS of more than 1.67 upper limit of normal or elevated bilirubin, which is uh, defined as uh, two times of normal. These are higher risk uh, a group of high risk patients in uh, whom there is randomized controlled trial evidence of the addition of a second line uh, uh, therapy. So if the patient after one year is, is having an uh, ALKFOS more than 1.67 or the is, is high, so this patient is non-responding and he needs a second line therapy. So in May 2016, the FDA approved obeticolic acid or uh, OCA as it's uh, usually uh, named to be used in combination with a UDCA for primary beta decoangitis and other patients with an inadequate response to UDCA or uh, as a single therapy in other patients who cannot tolerate uh, UDCA. The approval uh, was based on international uh, phase three uh, voice trial of patients, which included 2016 patients of BBC. The trial included patients who had uh, not shown a reduction in ALKFOS level with UDCA at optimal dose for at least one year as monotherapy in those who are intolerant to uh, UDCA. So the second line here is ubiquitic acid. So that, that uh, in patients with adequate response to UDCA or UDCA intolerant, as I mentioned, defined as ALKPOS more than 1.67, available to normal after one year of treatment and or elevated bilirubin more than uh, 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 two milligram. Addition of abuticolic acid uh, has been associated with improvement in biochemical surrogates of disease activity, uh, reasonably likely to predict improved outcome. So here, uh, we therefore recommend that addition of OCA is considered for patients with inadequate response to UDCA or uh, who are intolerant to uh, uh, UDCA. So in patients with advanced liver disease, prescription of OCA must follow the drug label because uh, it might cause some uh, uh, problems and it, sh it should be prescribed by an expert hepatologist who know how to deal with uh, uh, this drug. So there's also some unlicensed medication like burizanide, usually if it's an overlap between uh, IH and BBC. Uh, fibroids now, we're having a uh, growing evidence of its use in, in the fibroids. I, I personally used it with some patients and it showed very good response. Steroids, mixed fixate, cyclosporin, also 
uh, were used, but with no uh, good evidence of uh, efficacy. So what about extrahepatic uh, uh, issues of BBC, which sometimes more difficult to treat than the liver condition itself? So for pleuritis, we can use uh, emollients and oatmeal uh, extract to improve drying and inflamed skin. Uh, the use of cold water for bath or shower to uh, uh, provide some symptom relief of pleuritis triggered by exacerbated or exhibited by heat or warmth, mainly at night. A psychological intervention for addictive scratching and scratch dependence. And also we can search for uh, added uh, allergens, especially patients who have, who have hyper eosinophilia or IgE mediated uh, allergy. Also biosequestrants are usually uh, widely used as first line uh, uh, therapy like uh, uh, cholestyramine. Also we can use rifaximine as second line with a dose of uh, 150 or 300 milligram per day, but please uh, be cautious and keep your eye on liver functions. And also oral opiate anti uh, antagonists like naltrexone can be used at third line. And also SSRIs and gabapentin are used empirically in management of uh, cholestatic itching. And liver transplant for pleuritis uh, uh, is highly effective in terms of rapid reduction in pleuritis severity. But still, there is a small proportion of patients, even after transplant, they don't uh, show 100% response and they, they uh, still have some uh, itching. So for fatigability, there's high quality clinical trials and uh, this area are limited and there is no uh, licensed uh, therapy. Other causes should be excluded as uh, other autoimmune conditions like hypothyroid, autoimmune anemias, and you know, of course, anemia can cause uh, fatigue and even sometimes can cause itching if it's iron deficient. Uh, demography associated conditions of uh, therapy such as type two diabetes and antihypertensive therapy, and right night and autonomic dysfunction, dehydration, restless leg, uh, and concurrent medications such as uh, beta blockers. For sick complex, we can use artificial tears and saliva are often helpful. Uh, Bilocarabine or uh, CV malign or muscarinic receptor uh, agonist can be used and if symptoms are refractory. Uh, patients with severe uh, xerostomia should be given oral hygiene advice to prevent the development of dental caries. Vaginal uh, moistures also might be helpful and patients with refractory symptoms should be referred to for special management and evolving new therapies exist. For osteoporosis, as a part of uh, evaluation of high-risk patients and those uh, at the risk of osteoporosis, osteoporosis the easier recommend considering the use of DEXA to assess the bone mineral density uh, at presentation and at follow-up uh, where indicated, which is usually uh, uh, yearly. Easily suggest uh, sub uh, supplementing patients with BBC with calcium and vitamin D according to local practice. And bisphosphonate are safe and effective treatment for patients with BBC and significantly elevated fracture risk from osteoporosis, but easily recommend caution when using them in those patients with viruses. And as you as you know, that uh, bis bisphosphonate can induce esophageal ulcerations. So if patients who's having viruses, it should be used with extreme caution. And also uh, easily recommend therapy initiation uh, following specific osteoporosis uh, uh, guidelines. So for fat soluble uh, uh, vitamin uh, malabsorption like in um, ED, uh, E, and K, the cholestasis that affects patients with BBC and subsequent reduced by acid secretion may result in increased risk of lipid malabsorption. However, deficiency in fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K are uncommon in BBC. The fat soluble vitamin malabsorption can occur in patients with BBC, particularly those with prolonged jaundice. And here, easy suggests uh, supplementation should be considered on an individual basis. So it's not for all patients, usually those who are having jaundice. So for hyperlipidemia, uh, it's a feature of cholesterol, as you all know, for which there is no uh, uh, substantial evidence to support an elevated uh, CVS risk uh, in patients with BBC. And in subgroup of patients with BBC and metabolic syndrome, those with high cholesterol, low HDL and high LDL. The easiest suggest uh, uh, a pharmacological approach with cholesterol lowering agents on case by case basis. Treatment is not contradicted here. Or it's, uh, I just want to take a chance to talk about statins with, with liver disease. Uh, 
before many years, statin were contraindicated in any kind of liver disease. Now statins can be used safely in those patients with even uh, and especially as child A, and even there is some evidence that statins might uh, uh, delay or might prevent uh, uh, HCC. And uh, also there's good evidence about simvastatin in reducing water pressure. So it can be used in child A and child B and even child C if indicated, but maximum dose of 20 uh, milligram per day. So please don't uh, deprive a patient of, of statins just because you're having liver disease. So there's some uh, uh, picture of skin manifestations of BBC. Here, as you can see, the densoma and densilasmus because of the hyper uh, uh, lipidemia. And here, some other skin manifestations of uh, uh, BBC. So in, uh, in this slide, uh, the summary done by the EASIN risk guidelines published in 2017. So when you have patients who are already diagnosed with BBC, the goal of therapy uh, uh, are the prevention of any stage complications of liver disease and management of any associated symptoms. So for to stratify risk and treat, we start with uh, osteomycolic acid with 15 milligram per kilogram per day. And after one year, we can assess the chemical response out the goal to an identification of low and high risk patients. So low risk patients, those who are showing uh, uh, adequate response to uh, UDCA. So those, uh, those patients uh, should go for individual uh, individualized follow-up according to symptom burden and disease stage. And those with high risk who are defined as after one year, still not showing good response to UDCA. So we search for features of IIH, if positive you can, we can add uracilamide, or if negative, you can add second line like oritocolic acid, or the off-label like fibrates, and also we can include them in clinical uh, uh, trials. And the monitoring uh, usually based on bilirubin, alkphos, AST, alum, albumin rate count, uh, and uh, elastography usually by fibro scan. So for stages and uh, uh, survey, so for disease staging, we use serum liver test, ultrasound, and elastography. Efficient esterotic with resin bilirubin and or decompensated liver disease uh, should be uh, referred to an expert center to assess for uh, uh, translantation and also for HCC and versus uh, screening by ultrasound and endoscopy. And also to manage actively uh, extra hepatic manifestations like bilirubitis, fatigue, sicca complex, and bone density, and any coexisting autoimmune disease, and actively manage, managing as brigade lines and offer information uh, about patient support uh, group. So for conclusion, BBC is a common cause of chronic cholestasis, uh, most uh, notably in women over age of 40. Uh, its progression results in end stage of a disease. The diagnosis can be made based on liver biochemical and serological findings without uh, biopsy. All patients need uh, uh, evaluation at diagnosis and on, uh, and on treatment of the individual risk for disease progression based on biochemical serological and imaging molecules that correlate with uh, 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 risk and stage uh, disease. For those with inadequate biochemical response to UDCA, there is a now a licensed second line agent, which is abitoclic acid or OCA, as well as several new uh, and uh, uh, repurposed drug in late stage development and clinical trials. As a symptomatic disease, especially as BBC, you need attention in an ongoing manner, not only for prevention of integrable disease, but also for coexisting uh, symptoms. Thank you so much and have a good day.